How's it going, guys? We have a possible question for Repro Physio for step one. If you're saying for Robin's Guy in 2CK, it's fair game to know your Repro Physio. Nearly identical question. If one of these Windows 98 type bootleg black and white graphs shows up one on the NBME exams, not my fucking opinion, okay? Now, their question is actually easier where they just ask you straight up which the following hormones is responsible for this temperature patterning. I took it a step further, OMG, and asked you which the following is an effect of the hormone at hand. Now, this graph plotting our daily temperature is a dubious way of attempting to predict ovulation. Okay, so very archaic, atavistic uh, method, but it's asked in the NBME nevertheless. So when we have ovulation, we have the graphene follicle rupture to form the corvus luteum, i.e. the follicular remnant, and that's going to produce progesterone, which among its many functions, such as maintaining the endometrial lining during pregnancy, it also has a role in thermoregulation. Okay, so we're in flexion point with our jump in temperature here refers to progesterone. Let's just hop to the answer choice here, not be a lengthy clip, which the following refers to progesterone. Choice A, granulous cell production of aromatase, wrong fucking answer, refers to FSH. So FSH is going to stimulate granulose cells in females, Sertoli cells in males to make aromatase, which is going to convert to androgens in estrogens. In this case, Wrong fucking answer. Choice B main is corpus luteum. Wrong fucking answer for beta HCG. Actually, just HCG. Okay, beta is the subunit that we measure during pregnancy test because HCG shares alpha subunit with TSH, LH, FSH. The point is HCG is going to be only produced if we have fertilization and the development of a placenta where we have trophoblast of that placenta with a syncytiotrophoblast outer layer that secretes HCG. The HCG is going to maintain the corpus luteum. And as we said, the corpus luteum is going to be producing progesterone, which in turn is going to maintain the endometrial lining. So if we don't have fertilization, we're not going to have HCG. We're not going to have an ability to maintain the corpus luteum. We're going to have a reduction in progesterone. We're not going to be maintaining the endometrial lining. And we're going to have slothing of the endometrium, okay? So menstruation. So HCG also, you should know, peaks at 8 to 10 weeks. Uh, that's also responsible for hyperemesis gravidarum, okay? Excessive vomiting in pregnancy, the effects of HCG. But at 8 to 10 weeks, the reason it peaks at that point is because from that time frame onward, the placenta will take over production of progesterone. So if that occurs, we no longer need the corpus luteum. Okay, it's needed, it's, it's obviated. So we no longer need HCG to maintain it. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, prevention of endometrial overgrowth, correct answer. Ultra high yield, okay, past level. You need to know that one of the effects of progesterone is to prevent overgrowth of endometrium. Estrogen stimulates growth of endometrium. So the biggest risk factor for endometrial hyperplasia and in turn endometrial carcinoma is unopposed estrogen. That phrase is exceedingly high yield. So if we have a scenario such as polycystic ovarian syndrome or uh, extreme obesity, or we have a patient who's taking hormone replacement therapy where she stops taking the progesterone component, I've seen that on the NBME exam, and we have a high level of estrogen in comparison to progesterone, then that's considered unopposed estrogen, and we get endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial carcinoma. And we have making of you a variety of vignettes, tell you a woman has vaginal bleeding, and that's going to be endometrial biopsy is the next best step. So uh, let's just hop to the other answer choice here. Choice D, rupture of graphene follicle, wrong fucking answer, it refers to LH, okay? So uh, during the follicular proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle first half, we're going to have a gradual increase in estrogen. And then we reach what's called the estrogen threshold, where we have a flip from negative feedback to positive feedback on the effects of LH by estrogen. We get an LH surge, and LH is going to directly cause the rupture of the graphene follicle. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, thecan internal cell production of androgen, wrong fucking answer, also refers to LH. Okay, so theca interna cells in females, Leydig cells in males are stimulated by LH, luteinizing hormone, to produce androgens. And then as we said before, FSH, stimulation of granulosa cells in females, Sertoli cells in males, makes aromatase. Theca interna cell production of androgen, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like the stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.